Today we will be learning about the knee joint. During this presentation, first of all, I will be explaining with the help of sketches. And then I will go over a plastinated model. At the end, I will be explaining about the stabilizing factors and those are responsible to prevent the dislocation occurring at the knee joint. The knee joint is the largest synovial joint of human body and it is classified as modified hinge joint because we have flexion extension and plus small amount of rotation of the leg which is occurring in my flex position of the knee. That's why it's called as a modified hinge joint. Let's look at the bones who contribute in making this joint. So we are looking at the distal femur, the proximal tibia. So these are the two bones who are primarily contribute in making my knee joint. We can see this patella bone that is facing front of my lower femur and we can also see this head of my fibula bone and this is also not contributing in making my knee joint. Now this knee joint is surrounded by a thick layer of a fibrous capsule which is well localized posteriorly, laterally but anteriorly above to patella there is little deficiency of this capsule and this allows the excess when we have to aspirate any fluid from this synovial cavity we need not to go into this joint space because if we insert a needle in the joint space there are fair enough chances we cause some serious type of damage to the intra-articular structure so we can tap above to this patella we can tap the synovial fluid and if there is any other diagnostic procedures to be carried over. Now let's focus on the bones who are contributing in making the articulation. So we are looking at the distal end of the femur and this is my left femur and this is you're looking from the front and this is you're looking from behind. And then these are the medial condyles of my femur. And this one are the lateral femoral condyles. The other bone who contribute in making this joint is the proximal tibia. And then we can look at this proximal tibia, the medial and the lateral tibial condyles. If we calculate this area of medial and lateral tibial condyles, this is given a name. We call it tibial plateau. And this is one of the feature we can see in the radiographs. And if you if you focus here, this part is being little bit raised and this intracondylar rise, we give it a name, we call it intercondylar eminence or the tibial spine. Now we can see the superior view, the proximal tibia. And if you look at these condyles, they are not of same size. The medial condyle is bigger than my lateral condyle and the shapes are different and this these are really helpful and this is my medial tibial condyle and this is my lateral tibial condyle. Now there are so many ligaments which contributes in making this joint. This joint is it looks that it might prone to be dislocated but this joint is very rarely dislocated and for that there are numerous ligaments, muscles and other factors they are responsible for the integrity of this joint. So now let's look at the important ligaments first. So what are those important ligaments? First set of the collateral ligaments like other hinge joints the knee joint also have these collateral ligaments and they are located parallelly on both sides of these two bones and these ligaments are we can see on the lateral side a band like structure which extends from my lower femoral condyle to the head of my fibula and this one is my fibular collateral or lateral collateral ligament. And if you look on the medial side we can see another strap and this is my medial collateral or the tibial collateral ligament. 
Now, if you pay attention, you can see that there is more gap and we will we'll look into that in our upcoming slides. So, what is that signifies here? Now, let's talk about the cartilages. What are these cartilages? They are also known as the menisci and these are the discs which are present within my joint and we are looking at from the lateral side and this is what we are looking at a meniscus and this meniscus is located laterally so we call it lateral meniscus and then medially we have a medial meniscus. So what are these meniscus? These are the crescent shaped fibrocartilages discs and in a section it looks like a wedge in between and that is helpful for the stability of this joint and they also act as this fibrocartilages disc it also act as for shock absorbing mechanism it has a significant role in this shock absorbing mechanism which is occurring at these joints. Now look at the superior surface for more clarification of these menisci so on my medial tibial articulating facet on the lateral articulating facet so you can see that this big c-shaped structure which is located on my tibial articulating facet and that is my medial meniscus and then we are looking at a rounded and that is my lateral meniscus and these menisci has been fixed in between the intercondylar eminence by anterior and posterior horns of the menisci so they have been fixed in these locations and now we can see them together the menisci has been placed and the collateral ligaments are being visible now what you notice here medially there is no space visible within my medial meniscus and medial collateral ligament but laterally there is a space so this space is important why it transmits this muscle tendon and who is this muscle tendon this is the tendon of my popliteus muscle and popliteus muscle has a key role to play when we have to unlock the knee when the knee is hyperextended it is locked and from this locked knee to go unlock why if I have to bend my knee so I have to bring this lateral rotation I have to bring this hyperextended knee into an extended format and once this unlocking is done which has been carried by this popliteus muscle now this knee can go into the flexion format. So now another very important ligament which we can see now within this given image and there we are looking at from the back and from the front and but remember this knee is in a flex format it is not facing these these are not facing one another like before so this is a flex knee and this is an extended knee this extended knee we are looking from the behind and this flex knee we are looking from the front why we need to do this because we have to look at another very important set of ligaments and these ligaments are called the cruciate ligament so this cruciate the word cruciate comes they resembles the letter x that like the x the two limbs crosses each other so same is happening and these are a pair of a very strong ligaments and their main job is to connect tibia to the femur and these ligaments are we can see that from this view this structure is my from the anterior and from the posterior and that is my anterior cruciate ligaments and this this anterior cruciate ligament along with its counterpart which is the posterior cruciate ligament what they do they have a very important job to do and they are providing stability to knee in the sagittal plane as well as once we have rotatory movements occurring at this knee joint and they are the strongest binding forces between the femur and the tibia and why they are named anterior cruciate and posterior cruciate ligament that is with reference to their attachment onto the plateau of the tibia bone on the basis of those attachments they are named as anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments and these ligaments they lie in the capsule of my knee joint but they are not present inside 
the synovial membrane. This point needs to be very clear. Now, the muscle who brings movements at my knee joint for flexion primarily the job is performed by the hamstrings and with the assistance coming from the sartorius and popliteus muscle along with the gracilis and for extension the big role is being played by the quadriceps femoris and we all know what are these quadriceps rectus femoris vastus lateralis medialis and intermedius muscle and they are assisted by tensor fascia lata and then for the lateral rotation and medial rotation, we have the contribution from the biceps, semitendinosus, membranosus, gracilis, sartorius, and popliteus muscle. This is a plastinated specimen of right knee joint. Before going in details, let's orient ourselves. This is my distal femur, and we are looking at the lateral condyle and the medial condyle of the femur. And this is my proximal tibia and this is my lateral tibial condyle and this is my medial tibial condyle. There we are looking at the fibula, the head and the neck part and there is my patellar ligament and there if you can see this is my patella which is a sesamoid bone and this is I'm pointing at the joint space which is my knee joint. Now let's look at the different ligaments. Let's first look at the collateral ligaments and in this view we can see this collateral ligament placed on the lateral side and this is but what, what we are looking at. This is my fibular collateral ligament. To have a better view I have to rotate this model a little bit. So for that now once this model has been rotated now you can see very clearly this band like structure and that is my fibular collateral ligament. To see on the other side I have to rotate it back and there you can see on the middle side this band which I am pointing at this moment this is my tibial collateral ligament. So these are the two collateral ligaments. After seeing these collateral ligaments now we should look into the menisci and there you can see very clearly the lateral meniscus and there is my medial meniscus and if you can try to see it from the back yes they are very nicely visible where we can see the lateral meniscus and we can see the medial meniscus. After that the next which we should look at are the cruciate ligaments. So now you can see very nicely the posterior cruciate ligament as I as we discussed earlier that this is present in the sagittal plane. This is, a, this is my posterior cruciate ligament. Now to look at the anterior cruciate ligament we have to look from the front and there it's not that easy. We have to have a flexion at this joint but you may have a little bit idea. You can see inside if you see inside there is anterior cruciate ligament is slightly visible but we will look into the model that will be more clearer for this understanding. So, so far we have looked into the collateral ligaments, we have looked at into the menisci and we have seen the cruciate ligaments. Now let's use this model to understand the different structures who are contributing in my right knee joint and there we are looking at different ligaments. Let's orient ourselves. This is the distal femur, proximal tibia and you can see the head of my fibula bone and right in front you can see this patellar tendon and then this is the patella which is embedded inside and on top you can see this part is called the quadriceps tendon. On the side we can see laterally we have the lateral collateral ligament or the fibular collateral ligament and on the middle side we can see this medial collateral ligament and we can see very easily the lateral meniscus here and we can see the medial meniscus here. Now if you want to see from the back from the same model what we can see here medially we can see this medial collateral ligament and laterally this 
fibular collateral or the lateral collateral ligament. Now you can pay attention here. Look, there's a space and this, my fibular collateral ligament, it's away. It's separated from my lateral meniscus. But if I look at my medial meniscus and my tibial collateral ligament, they are blended with each other. And this anatomical relationship has a significant role once we have injuries occurring at my medial collateral ligament and then we lead, we land up with unhappy triad and now we can see here another very important ligament and that is my posterior cruciate ligament and there you can see slightly the anterior cruciate ligament which is coming and ending at this place this is my medial meniscus and that's my lateral meniscus now we need to look inside we need to see the anterior cruciate ligament. For this, I have to put this joint in a flex format at the knee joint. Now this knee has been flexed and you can see these condyles are very clearly visible and there you can see very nicely the lateral meniscus and the medial meniscus. But what is what we are hunting at, we are looking for this structure and that is my anterior cruciate ligament and you can also see if you look inside this space, in the sagittal plane, you can also see the posterior cruciate ligament. So just quickly recap, we are looking at the fibular collateral ligament, we are looking at the tibial collateral ligament, we are looking at the lateral meniscus, the medial meniscus, anterior cruciate and posterior cruciate ligaments. Let's recap. This is a modified hinge type of joint. Articulating surfaces are the condyles of my lower femur and upper tibia, the capsule is thick and the ligaments, we have extracapsular and intracapsular ligaments. The stability is the biggest factor and for that the bony contours contribute a little to the stability of the joint but intercondylar eminence of the tibia that prevents sideways slipping of femur on tibia and then we have a big contribution coming from the ligaments and muscles and they make it a very stable joint and it is rarely dislocated and cruciate ligaments are indispensable to anterior posterior stability in flexion and the forward displacement of tibia on femur is prevented by anterior cruciate ligament and the backward displacement of tibia on femur is prevented by the posterior cruciate ligaments and these cruciate ligaments are really really playing a big job here and the integrity of posterior cruciate ligament is therefore is more important when when we are walking downstairs and or we are going down the hill and the movements are flexion and extension which are occurring at this joint thank you very much